Hello YouTube family, Josh here. Uh, it is late July, actually the last day in July, July 31st here in Kentucky and I have an exciting reveal for you today. I did promise you all about, I don't know, a month ago that I got some new equipment and I'm ready to reveal the first or the second. I don't know what order I'm gonna release these videos yet, but I did uh, promise um, to release a, a few videos, some teasers that I thought was some pretty cool equipment that I picked up recently. And the first one is the Lyson 70 liter honey creamer, automatic honey creamer. So for those of you that don't know, this is a product that Lyson makes. They are based out of Poland. And creamed honey is something that's not really familiar here in the United States but it's really popular in Europe. And so if you may ask, what is creamed honey? Well, creamed honey is a spreadable form of honey. So what exactly is that? Well, uh, it, <laughs> it is a honey that has the consistency, I like to say, of a thick toothpaste, you know, almost like a, a peanut butter. And so, you know, why would you want that? Well, because it's spreadable. So, you know, normal honey can be very, um, I don't know, drippy, runny, right? You put it on some toast, you gotta spread it in real quick. But if you have like a thick creamed honey, you can put that on some toast, on a biscuit, um, and it spreads really nice. So like I said, the Europeans have been indulging in creamed honey for God knows how long. Americans, very few Americans have been subjected to creamed honey and it's about time that we change that. So I got this machine. So this retails for just under $1,900. If you go to Better Bee's website, they are the exclusive United States carrier for Lyson. I think Lyson makes some absolutely phenomenal products, top notch. Like I said, it's a company out of Poland. So uh, it took a little bit to get it shipped here from Poland, but I'm thrilled with it. Um, I've got my first batch running right now and I'd really like to show it to you. So here we go. Okay, brand new 2024 Lyson Honey Creamer. This is the 70 liter model. So it comes with a honey gate on the front here. That's what this is, okay? And it's metal, so it's top quality, okay? But I did take it off in exchange for a ball valve. Um, now again, depending on when I'm gonna release the other video versus this one, I will tell you why I got a ball valve versus why I didn't. But for now, just understand that there is a ball valve connected to this, which is keeping the honey from running out. Holy cow, these things are not cheap. These are $95 a piece. So stainless steel and everything required um, to hook up equipment is insanely expensive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the creamer here. It's got a motor on top of it. Here's the Lyson. Uh, electronic, I guess, uh, box, control box. It has an emergency stop on it, which you have to make sure that this is pulled out before you can turn it on. It's got, I believe, a 10 amp fuse, and then this is a on off control. So it's currently off. If I turn it to on, the display turns on. Now, I've already put honey in here and I've had it running continuous for 60 hours. Now, that's not non-stop churning. That means, and the way that this is automatically set, 15 minutes of run time and 45 minutes stopped. And then 15 minutes of run, 45 minutes of stop, depending on how many hours you tell it to run. Now, I have to give a lot of thanks to my buddy Dave Hansberry, who you guys met on the honey extraction video that I posted recently. He's been doing this for, I think, a couple years now and I really picked his brain and he was gracious enough to answer my 3,450 questions on the topic because without him I would have had to do a lot more research and so he informed me and by the way his creamed honey is phenomenal I've tasted all the flavors excellent excellent top-notch creamed honey so why reinvent the wheel why not copy <laughs> so to speak, and make a product that is excellent as his. So he told me 48 hours of runtime and it'll be ready. So this is what it looks like inside. And I'll go ahead and hit start so you can see it working here. Let me see here. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, duh. So that emergency stop means you raise the lid. They have obviously safety involved. So if I hit start right now, okay, it's gonna start churning. And like I said, it will do this for 15 minutes and then it's gonna stop for 45 minutes and then start again for 15 and then stop for 45 for however many hours I say. And like Dave said, you know, 48 is the minimal amount. Now, if you can't bottle it immediately after 48 hours, you wanna keep it running because you do not want the seed honey and the liquid honey to separate. And that is exactly what we are creaming together. So let's talk about that. What exactly does that mean? I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for a minute. So to make creamed honey, you need a seed honey. Well, what is a seed honey? A seed honey is a fancy term, I guess, for crystallized honey. Well, what is crystallized honey? Well, most people know what crystallized honey is, but if you don't, all natural, raw, unfiltered honey over time is going to crystallize. It, it literally looks like that. Turns from regular looking honey into honey crystals, okay? And that's just a natural process that raw honey does over time depending on it, which pollens are present within the honey. Some honeys crystallize much faster and much more um, readily than other honeys. Uh, for instance, honey that is derived a majority from canola almost crystallizes in the comb. Other honeys, you know, like the ones that I have around here, you know, white clover, bush honeysuckle, black locust, I've not had any of my honey crystallize yet. Now that could change, I'm just saying, I've not had my honey crystallize yet. So, what did I do? Um, I got, I purchased some seed honey of some really good crystallized honey that I thought was really good tasting, really, really fine crystallized honey because texture matters with this stuff. And I put five pounds of crystallized honey inside the creamer. And the ratio that you want is nine to one. Nine parts liquid honey to one part seed honey, crystallized honey. So five pounds of seed honey means I needed 45 pounds of my own honey. So I added 45 pounds of my Bees in the Weeds, LaGrange, Kentucky, local honey, and added it to the seed honey, and I let this churn for 60 hours. Now, you only need 48 hours, but I knew I wasn't gonna be able to bottle it after 48 hours, and in fact, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to bottle it tonight. So when I'm done with this video, Again, I'm going to start the process where it's going to keep mixing this. Now, is there any problem with over creaming the honey or over mixing it? No. The whole point is to combine the seed honey with the, with the liquid honey to create creamed honey. Okay? However, you do not want this to stop and settle for a long period of time before you're ready to bottle it. Because then the seed honey and the liquid honey could separate over time okay so well how do you prevent that when somebody buys it from you excellent question <laughs> so when this is ready to bottle and i have these um man lake glass jars that i bought which i haven't really gotten them out yet but oh, take you long for the ride Okay, these are nine ounce glass jars that I'm gonna put the creamed honey inside of, okay? And so when, after 48 hours or 48 hours plus, whenever you are ready to bottle this, you'll take that jar, set it under here, okay? You're gonna open your ball valve and that's how you're gonna fill those jars. I was hoping I could use this Maxant no drip stainless steel valve, but I reached out to Maxant today and they said, nope, creamed honey is way too thick. It will not pass through that. So their recommendation was to actually bottle using a ball valve. I mean, like I said, this is solid stainless steel, so it's not gonna corrode. So 
After 48 hours plus, when you're ready to bottle, you go ahead and bottle on them, and then you immediately put those jars inside, and I'll take you over here. A refrigerator, or like I like to say, a wine cooler. And you want that wine cooler to be 55 degrees. And so I'm going to set those jars inside here, capped the creamed honey inside here for two weeks. So 14 days. And what that does at 55 degrees, that sets the creamed honey. And what does setting mean? Well, it, it gives it that consistency that you're looking for. Because right now, inside this creamer, you know, it's still, it's fairly runny. Now, it's not as runny as liquid honey, but it's still fairly runny, right? It almost has the consistency right now of, oh gosh, I don't know, um, a thick maple syrup or... I don't know, caramel, maybe caramel would be a good descriptor. But you want it a lot thicker than that because a spreadable form of honey, like I said, is almost like a, I describe it like a thick toothpaste. And I know, I know that doesn't sound appetizing, but that is the consistency, right? Don't think of it from a flavor standpoint, but think of it from a consistency standpoint. So 48 hours creaming, two weeks at 55 degrees, and it'll be set. And then you can pull those jars out and, I mean, within reasonable time frame, within, you know, a few years, it should not separate on you. Um, after that, maybe it will over a really long period of time. I'm not sure. The jury's still out on that. Time will tell. But Dave, Dave let me know, you know, I mean, not many people take two years to consume a nine-ounce jar of creamed honey, right? So... This particular batch that I'm making right now that's five pounds of seed, 45 pounds of regular honey, so 50 pounds of creamed honey, um, I should get approximately 100 jars or so. But that's it. This is all I'm going to have this year, and it is regular creamed honey. So there's been zero flavorings added to this. Next year, I hope to have, I'm going to say a cinnamon creamed honey, a peanut butter creamed honey, a chocolate creamed honey, maybe a vanilla creamed honey. <coughs> Excuse me, and we'll see possibly what other flavors. But you can add flavoring powders to this to get those, you know, to, to you know, step it up a notch if you like those flavorings. Um, however, due to Kentucky State regulations, that requires a commercial kitchen license. So... The jury's still out on that, whether I'm going to do that or not. Um, it's just more red tape that I have to go through, you know. Say la vie, right? Uh, but I just wanted to quickly show you guys this video. Um, I'm really excited about this machine, this product. <coughs> Super excited to be able to add creamed honey to my lineup. Um, I think customers are really going to enjoy this. Uh, I've had Dave's creamed honey, and it's phenomenal, so I'm hoping mine is going to be hopefully somewhat as good as his. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, you know, like I said, pretty excited about this. So just wanted to take a few minutes to show you the new uh, fancy machine here, and uh, stay tuned, and I will have more updates on this. And if you're here locally, and you come to the LaGrange Farmer's Market here in about, oh, I don't know, three weeks or so, I should have some creamed honey for you. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.